from Ball State University. News for the campus community and all of Delaware County. This is Newslink Indiana. High waves, winds, floods, and even some snow are affecting millions of people as Hurricane Sandy makes landfall on the East Coast. Good evening, I'm Cameron Riddle. And I'm Miranda Gore, and we're feeling some of those remnants from the hurricane here in Indiana. Let's head on over to the Weather Center with a first look at weather. Well, that's right, guys. That Hurricane Sandy will actually be impacting our area more than one might think. What we're taking a look at right now is a national map of warnings, and all these warnings up and down the East Coast are all related to wind, actually. And here in the Appalachian region of West Virginia, those are actually blizzard warnings that have come out ahead of Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy is currently still a Category 1 hurricane, just making landfall right now in parts of New Jersey and the Delaware. Here's that snow potential we talked about. Everywhere under this bubble could see some form of accumulable snow under this area, specifically areas in the Appalachian, Appalachian Mountain region, could see two feet plus of snow by the time it's all said and done. Taking a look at the National View of Satellite Radar, you can see here's Hurricane Sandy still spinning into the parts of the northeastern United States. Right now here in Muncie, however, 43 degrees, northwest wind at 23 miles per hour. Winds are going to be the major impact to us from Sandy. There's a wind advisory until 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Sustained winds 25 to 35 miles per hour with gusts that could possibly get up to 40 to 50 which can definitely make it dangerous if you're driving a high profile vehicle or you have loose objects in your yard. This is definitely wind gusts that could blow those around and cause some damage. And we're going to be tracking these all night. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Michael. Back here in the Midwest, we're not out of the clear from Sandy's effects. The storm could lead to waves as high as 33 feet on parks of Lake Michigan, and the National Weather Service has issued gale and strong warnings through Wednesday. The National Weather Service is predicting waves to be 10 to 18 feet tonight and then build to 20 to 33 feet tomorrow. The conditions may even lead to some snow falling over Michigan. And speaking of snow, Sandy is set to collide with a wintry storm heading east, and it could lead to a white Halloween for Manny. Schools in North Carolina Mountains close school today ahead of a predicted one or two feet of snow and heavy winds. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning for the region until Wednesday morning. Turning back to East Central Indiana, a community is grieving tonight over the loss of two young ladies. Nicole Griffin has that story. Two students from Monroe Central High School, located in Parker City, were killed early Sunday morning in a car and train crash. The two young women were identified as Amber Morrow and Kristen Kaiser, both 17 years old. The collision happened right here on Plum Street. The vehicle was traveling northbound on Plum Street while the train was traveling westbound. Now, as you can see, there are alarms and lights on this railroad crossing, but there are no cross arms. The train was likely to be traveling 60 miles per hour. Cross arms are not required at all railroad crossings in Indiana. Autopsies have been scheduled, but the exact cause of death has not yet been determined. The crash happened at 2.30 Sunday morning. There was also a third person in the car identified as Joshua Ponder. Ponder is in fair condition as of Sunday morning at Dayton Hospital. The community gathered this evening at Monroe Central High School for a prayer vigil. There were pictures of Morrow and Kaiser. There was also space available for people to write messages to the girls. Looking around the room, people were providing comfort for one another. Tears were falling and hugs were given. The vigil opened up thanking the community for their support. From the Monroe Central family, we say thank you very much. It's been a long time since we've been through anything like this. We are grieving. It was a tough, tough day. This wounded community has come together to support one another and mourn the loss of their friends. In Muncie, Nicole Griffin, Newslink, Indiana. And the area had also planned a vigil for Monday. Man says the prayer vigil is scheduled for 6, 6 o'clock that night in the school gym. And according to emails obtained by the Associated Press, state health officials knew six clinics in Indiana received the recalled back pain medication a week before the public was notified. The same medication was linked to the outbreak of fungal meningitis. 
An Indiana State Department of Health spokeswoman says the agency waited to give time for the physicians to give the information they needed. 44 cases and three deaths have been associated with the outbreak. And coming up, after 67 years, one local business is finding itself on the chopping block. Find out why the lumber yard is closing its doors. And they risked their lives in service to our country, and now local groups are giving back, helping Muncie veterans. This. Welcome back. This Wednesday will mark the end of an era for the city of Muncie. In less than 48 hours, its citizens will lose the last locally owned lumber yard, McCarty Lumber. Newslink Indiana reporter Craig Collins has more. McCarty Lumber started doing business in 1945, providing building materials for Muncie citizens. Over that span of over 60 years, McCarty customer Bob Owens says that the lumber yard became more than just a place of business. I like coming here because of the personal touch you get. Everybody knows you. So there's a real good feeling of uh, coming in here and knowing you're going to see a friend and uh, the, the jokes and the good times we have here at the counter and then getting the work done, you know. Longtime McCarty customers like Rick Marlowe, that personal feel is what made the news of the business closing tough to take. You can come in here and sit down with Greg, Sue, Steve, Kevin, any of them and just talk. It doesn't have to be about lumber. It doesn't have to be about doors or windows. Um, it can, it's pretty much friendship. When I got the phone call, it was the day after my son had a massive heart attack, just a couple of weeks ago. And that hurt just as about as bad, just as about as bad. And um, I was sad, sad, sad to see it go. Matt Gossage, another longtime customer, says that the loss of McCarty Lumber is a sign the country is headed in the wrong direction. What we're seeing here, I guess for the lack of a better word, is the sterilization of America. I mean, it's these big box stores. They don't pay enough. The people don't have any experience. Experience. I can come in a place like this. What I, I'm, I do, has, as you can tell, I'm pretty shaken up. Yeah. But I can come in a place like this, and if I have a turn-of-the-century lock, lock, Kevin can make me a key. If I go to one, one of the big stores, they don't know anything about it because, like I said, they don't pay for experience. Sue Earls, co-owner of McCarty Lumber, has been with the business for 16 years and says McCarty Lumber strove to provide the optimal service for their customers. I will try to say how I feel because it's emotional. Yeah. I'm okay till I really start talking about it. It's like the guy said, it's very sad because this is the last actual lumber yard in this area. We wanted to sell quality, and that's one of the things we're known for. It's a part of my life, and I'm sad to see it in for myself, for our customers, and for our employees. Earl says that McCarty Lumber was able to compete with the bigger stores like Menards and Lowe's for a while. However, the downturn of the economy, a downturn that has claimed 84 lumber yards since 2008, is what caused this lumber yard to start the process of closing its doors. When closing time does roll around on Wednesday, Earls expects the scene to be emotional. I'm going to try to not cry. <laughs> I've still got to cancel contracts and rent leases and stuff like that. Uh, so if I can concentrate on that, maybe I'll be all right. But I expect to have red eyes and a red nose and cry a lot. Some of McCarty's employees have found their next jobs while others are still looking for work. As for Earls, she plans to retire. In Muncie, Craig Collins, Newslink, Indiana. Thank you, Craig. Muncie residents who still want to make that one last visit to McCarty Lumber, don't worry, there's still time. The lumber yard will officially close its doors for good at 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday. A service organization called Homes for Heroes is working to assist disabled veterans in Muncie. The program builds new homes for veterans who struggle with housing and other life issues. The organization will join Bridges Community Services, another service organization in Muncie that helps veterans with income and other services. 
Missy Nelson of Bridges leads the supportive services for veterans. For Heroes is more geared towards home ownership, where supportive services for veteran families is geared more towards uh, rental relationships. If they had somebody that was going into housing and didn't know where to turn in the community for resources like clothing banks, uh, food banks, any, any connection that we can make and any program that would uh, fall within the guidelines of our program, we'd be happy to make that connection and work with their program. Homes for Heroes has not set an official date of when they will arrive here in Muncie, but they do have affiliates in South Bend, Muncie, and Sherrillville. Let's take a look at your ball at your daily news headlines tomorrow with Kirsten Davenport. There she is. Hey, Kirsten. Thanks, Randa and Cameron. Here are the previews are what's coming up in the DN tomorrow. Following tonight's lecture between Donna and Jake, the DN team will look at the highs and lows of both participants. And also, there will be a food drive taking place this week with competition between each department. Find out information and how your department can win within tomorrow's edition. And finally, the DN team will have more coverage on Hurricane Sandy. All that and more coming up in tomorrow's edition of Ball State Daily News. On newsstands across campus or 24 hours a day at bsudailynews.com. All right, thank you, Kirsten. It may be a weakening hurricane, but as Sandy continues to slam the East Coast, the snurf and snow is on the way. But will we? This is News Link Indiana. Well, we've been talking a lot about Hurricane Sandy and its effects on the East Coast. Well, let's take a look at NASA's time lapse here of Hurricane Sandy. Now, this is from space, and it's just off the coast of the Carolinas right before. Hurricane Sandy made, made landfall. The National Weather Service reports sustained winds at about 85 miles per hour. Sandy has already proven deadly, killing at least 67 people in the Caribbean last week. 51 of those were in Haiti. Let's take a look, Cameron, over at our weather center to see when we're going to be feeling those effects of Hurricane Sandy. All right, Michael Behrens is over there standing by. Hey, Michael. Hey, Cameron. Well, it was certainly great imagery from Sat NASA right there. Very impressive image actually and it's technically still a category one hurricane with winds at 80 miles per hour even though it has begun to make landfall but we'll get more on hurricane sandy in just a moment taking a look at current temperatures across the country 61 in dallas 56 in denver cool temperatures everywhere 46 in st louis as we take a closer look here at indiana indianapolis 50 45 right now 47 in bloomington 44 lafayette 43 here in muncie and we're starting to see the first effects of Hurricane Sandy, and that is this stronger wind we're experiencing right now. Currently a north-northwest wind at 23. It's actually making it feel almost 10 degrees cooler outside at 34 instead of 43. High temperatures today, well, they weren't much better. 46 degrees was our high here in Muncie, 51 in Indianapolis, 51 in Lafayette. Bloomington, the warm spot at 54 degrees. Almanac for today can show you that difference. We're supposed to be at 59 this time of year. We only made it to 46. That's way cooler. Now, we showed you this map at the beginning of the show. This is the current warnings across the country right now. These are wind-related warnings with the hurricane blizzard warnings over parts of the Appalachian Mountain region. And here we go again. Here's Hurricane Sandy. It started to move just a little bit inward. Still Category 1 hurricane at this time with sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. But once this thing starts to make its way inland, these higher elevated regions and regions in the cooler area are going to see snow possibly two to three feet in the higher elevations of the Appalachian region. Taking a look at the satellite radar composite over Indiana right now in Muncie, we're clear, just cloud cover, the rain just getting into Ohio. You can see it spinning just over New Jersey as of right now. Now what can we expect for the overnight into tomorrow? Cloudy skies, a possibility of a wintry mix actually coming in overnight before 8 a.m. tomorrow is when this is possible. 36 degrees for your low if that possibility of a wintry mix. Nothing expected to stick with that because the surface is not going to be warm enough to handle it. Here it is, Hurricane Sandy turning into a tropical storm as it moves inland and eventually turns to a tropical depression over parts of Pennsylvania before finally beginning to slowly move out of the area. It's going to dump a lot of rain over there. Some estimates were predicting upwards of a foot of rain. For us, though, winds are the big concern. Wind advisory until 8 p.m. Tuesday, sustained 25 to 35, gust 40 to 50 with this system tomorrow. The possibility to mix around 8 a.m., turning to rain throughout the day as we move on. Taking a look at our seven-day forecast for Tuesday, we do have that chance of mix in the morning before warming up and turning to just rain. 45 for your high. Halloween rain in 47. 
Sun returns Thursday, but the warm temperatures will not. Only 48 for the high on Thursday. Sunny Friday and Saturday in the 50s and a warm weekend ending with 60 degrees for your Sunday. All right, Michael, I don't know if we need to break out the snow boots, the rain gear, I don't know. Well, I'd go with the rain gear because you're not going to get any accumulation from that snow. It's definitely going to be a rain event. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Five Delaware County High School teams are teaming up for and competing in the volleyball state finals in sectionals. We'll tell you who up next. And Zach Huffman is in with a recap of that crazy Colts game yesterday. The details next in sports. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, Zach Huffman for NewsLink Indiana Sports. Well, it was another big weekend in sports around the nation, but let's get our coverage started with the sectional semifinals in high school football. The Yorktown Tigers hosted the Eastbrook Panthers on Friday night in Class 3A football. The Tigers were down 14-7 at the half, but it was the fourth quarter that haunted Yorktown as sophomore quarterback Riley Neal threw back-to-back -back interceptions. Eastbrook won the game 35-20 and will play Western in the sectional championship. In Class 4A, the Delta Eagles won their sectional semifinal matchup against Greenfield Central 28-3. The Eagles will travel to Mount Vernon to play Fortville. Now in high school volleyball, three Delaware County schools won a semi-state championship this past weekend. In Class 1A, the number 5 ranked Cowan Blackhawks defeated Frontier. In Class 2A, it was a defending state champion Wapahani Raiders defeating Southwood. And the number one ranked Yorktown Lady Tigers swept the number seven ranked Fairfield Falcons. The IHSA Volleyball State Championships will be played at Worthen Arena starting Saturday at 11 a.m. Cowan will play Lagodi for the 1A title. Wampahani will play Providence. The Yorktown Tigers will play Indianapolis Bishop Chatard at 3 p.m. And Carmel looks to win their first state title as they take on Avon for the 4A championship at 5 p.m. So good luck to all three Delaware County schools on Saturday. Now from high school volleyball to college football, for the second year in a row, the Ball State Cardinals are bowl eligible. After a win over the weekend, the team made, out the, made the trip out to West Point, New York, to take on the Black Knights of Army. Ball State took the lead in the first quarter and never looked back. The final score of the game was Ball State 30 to Army 20. Ball State has now defeated Army two years in a row. Key players of the game included sophomore halfback Juwan Edwards, who rushed for 148 yards and one touchdown. Edwards has now surpassed 100 yards rushing four times this season and six times in his career. Keith Winning ended the game with a total of 189 passing yards off of 27 attempts and 18 completions. From high school volleyball to college football. Excuse me, we've already said that. So we're going to go to the Indianapolis Colts. Now Andrew Luck did his own winning over the weekend as the Colts took down the Tennessee Titans in an overtime thriller. The Titans quarterback Matt Hasselbeck lines up in the gun and will throw a deep ball to Kendall Wright for the early touchdown as Wright celebrates his third touchdown of the season with a dunk over the crossbar. Now there wasn't much action in between the third and the fourth quarter until DeLone Carter punched in a one-yard touchdown, nodding up the score at 13 with three minutes and 24 seconds to play. Luck found Dwayne Allen over the middle for a short gain in which he loses the ball in a controversial call. Referees agreed that Allen's forward progress had been stopped before the ball was fumbled. Now Indianapolis won the overtime coin toss, selecting to receive the ball. Luck led the Colts down the field before completing a 16-yard touchdown pass to Vic Ballard. It was the pass that made Sports Center's top 10. Ballard, a rookie, went for the Superman jump into the end zone, striking the pylon for the game-winning touchdown. Referees reviewed the play and confirmed the score. This was the first touchdown of Ballard's career, in which he celebrated as well by spiking the ball. Now, Luck recorded his first road victory as an Indianapolis quarterback as the Colts defeated the Titans 19-13. In postseason play for Major League Baseball, the San Francisco Giants swept the Detroit Tigers to win their second World Series in three years. Closer Sergio Romo recorded the series-ending strikeout of the Triple Crown winner Miguel Cabrera. The Giants, who won their final seven games, uh, celebrated by storming the infield at Comerica Park. Pablo Sandoval was named World Series MVP after crushing three home runs throughout the series. Guys, big shout out goes to the Delaware County Schools representing three times in the state finals for volleyball.
big games this Saturday at Worthen. Make sure you show up, show your support. All right, thank you, Zach. And in case you haven't heard, there's a big snowstorm out east, but after successfully making it out of New York, author Donna Finn and entertainer, entertainer Jake Sasseville stormed onto Ball State's campus with tips and tricks for aspiring entrepreneurs. And for all you little ghosts and goblins out there, trick-or-treating's only a few days away. Newslink Entertainment reporter Macy Tomlinson has your haunted holiday hours. Welcome to Newslink Entertainment, I'm Macy Tompelson. Today, two guests visited Ball State as part of the Letterman Lecture Series. Travis Robinson met with Jake Sasseville and Donna Finn this afternoon prior to their appearance at Pruis Hall. me some fun stories about what had happened on the way over, what was happening in their lives, and what they were here to talk about with Ball State students tonight. Donna talked with me about her books that she had released about entrepreneurship for Generation Y, which is also known as the young people of this world. Jake talked about his recent web series that will soon become a TV show called Delusions of Grandeur, as well as his new book that was just released today titled Slightly Famous. The show is an improvisational sitcom that had run online and will soon be released on U.S. TV stations in 2013. Before their tour of campus, Jake and Donna got to meet up with Charlie Cardinal and learned to chirp from the <laughs> chirper himself so that they would be ready to meet the students of Ball State. Halloween comes every year. This year, trick-or-treating is from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Families with children should remember to stick to the times, accompany their children, have a planned route, have a meeting time, stay in well-lit areas, eat only factory-made candy, and take a flashlight. Lastly, remember to have fun. Looking for something to do on Halloween? You should check out the nearby haunted attractions. They include Haunted Forest in Muncie, Shocktoberfest Haunted Trail in Anderson, and Old Orchard's Haunted Trail in Spiceland. These attractions are not recommended for children. Haunted Hill, also in Muncie, is family-friendly. For more information, check out thestarpress.com. Thank you, Macy. Well, we have a final look at weather. Is there any chance that Cameron here is going to make a snow angel tomorrow? Well, I wouldn't count on those snow angels tomorrow. As Well, there might be a little bit of temperature for the snow to fall. That's only going to be in the higher levels of the atmosphere. It's not going to be anything cold enough for those snow accumulations to stick down here. Again, we do have a wind advisory in effect till 8 p.m. tomorrow. Possible gust up to 50 miles per hour. All right, thanks for crushing my dreams there, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. That's all for Newslink Indiana tonight. Be sure to watch tomorrow right here at 9 p.m. on Cardinal Vision. I'm Randy Gore. And I'm Cameron Riddle. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, have a good night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everybody looks satisfied. You like that? <laughs> Everybody looks satisfied. I can use these papers, but I'll play with them. Yeah. Just imagine the kids.